So in today's video, I'm going to be doing just a quick first look and overview of the IQ Link control system by Corsair. Now this is Corsair's brand new device control system uh, meant to control fans, RGB lighting, AIOs, LCD panels, pumps, etc. There's a number of different products coming out for this. Uh, I was able to get a hold of the QX120 RGB fan kit and also the H150i RGB AIO in the 360 millimeter version. Now I've purchased both of these with my own money. I have no affiliation or partnership with Corsair. So I think if you ask Corsair, they would tell you, you really don't need a video on how to connect all of this. It really is just one cable and it just daisy chains through all the devices and is really simplistic. And although I would agree with that, there are a couple of little nuances and I just want to share with you what my experiences with that are. So, so right up front, let's talk real quick about the pricing of these kits. Now I was under the impression watching some other videos and getting information. These were going to be about 10 to 15% more expensive. Um, it seems to me a little bit that they're considerably beyond that. Uh, it kind of depends on how you determine what the controller is worth and things of like that, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, the QX120 RGB fan kit uh, was $169.99, and I've seen it on sale earlier today at $159.99, uh, but that's considerably more expensive, say, than like an LL120 or even the QL120 fan kits by quite a bit. The H150i RGB AIO in the 360 millimeter uh, version was uh, $249.99. I believe in the 240 millimeter version, it is $209.99. So these are really not cheap kits. Uh, the fans individually are about 50 bucks for the 120 millimeter versions, uh, about $54.99 for the 240 millimeter versions. And so it's a very expensive fan. Now it is a good fan, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. It's got a lot of features embedded with it. Uh, so, you know, whether it's worth it for you or it's not, it's going to be a decision that you'll have to make. But that's kind of the pricing. And as I'll get into in just a minute, uh, some of the nuances with the cables that are included with this, uh, the additional patch cables range from anywhere from $9.99 to uh, $19.99. And there's a kit available as well for $49.99 should you need some of the additional cables. So let's talk briefly about the IQ Link Hub. Now this really is the heart of the system. This is where all of the connections are made. It's what gives all the power to the system and gives you the control to IQ. Now the controller is uh, relatively small compared to the other controllers we've looked at from Corsair recently. Uh, it does magnetically attach, but it also does come with some sticky tape should you choose to do that. Now it's got two connectors for the IQ Link uh, cables. We'll talk more about that in just a second. Uh, along the bottom, you get the power connection, which is a PCI Express power connector. In this case, it is not SATA, so you will need to make sure that you have a free PCIe uh, power connector from your power supply because this does power a bunch of different devices. It does all of the fan speed control, all of the RGB controls your pump. Uh, all of those devices get its power from here. So you need a little bit of additional power delivery. It has a micro USB connection, which connects to a nine pin uh, motherboard header on your motherboard. And that's how IQ will control this device. The remaining port here in my last video I did, I didn't know what that port did. It, there wasn't really any information that I could see on it. Uh, but what that port actually is, it's a little two pin port. It is a tachometer port. Now for just the fan kit, you don't really need that. But for the AIO, uh, you'll want to connect that up to your CPU uh, fan header. All it feeds back is the TAC, the RPM setting for the pump so that your motherboard is aware of that. That's what that cable is. The specs on this, I wasn't sure of this initially when I first saw this system either. Uh, Corsair describes this as controlling up to 14 devices, but it's seven per port. So you get two ports on here. Each one can control seven. You know, in some cases, if you're doing, you know, 10 fans or things like that, you're going to need to use at least both of these connections here. So it won't be just a single cable run. You'll have two of them. And if you're doing more than that, you'll have a second controller in here and you'll need to do even more. Now back to the pricing of this controller, uh, Corsair is charging $59.99 just for the controller, which seems like way too much to me. But you know, that kind of 
ties into maybe why these are so expensive. So hopefully maybe over time that price will come down. But if you need a controller or a replacement one, $59.99 is the current price of that. So let's talk briefly about the IQ Link connection cables that come with this system. Now there's a number of different lengths of these and a couple of different styles of connectors here. Right now I believe it comes in a 100 millimeter, 200 millimeter, and a 600 millimeter length cable. Uh, there is also a 600 millimeter splitter cable out there but it comes in a couple of different types of connectors. Uh, we'll just call this kind of a standard straight through cable here. They also do make it with a 90 degree connector on here, so it kind of sits more flush with the fan. And that's one of the areas where I'm a little confused as to why they chose the cables that they did, but we'll talk about that here. And so they also do come in white. Uh, they also come in black. It depends on what system you're doing, which uh, components you're installing. So the fan kit is coming with a single 600 millimeter cable uh, with the straight uh, connectors on it. There, it does not come with the 90 degree connectors on here. 600 millimeters uh, for most setups I think is going to be adequate uh, to get your first cable run and then of course you're gonna daisy chain everything on top of that. Now as we connect that cable into the fan kit, you can connect it either way, it's reversible. So it kind of doesn't really matter which orientation you connect that in. One of the concerns I had about this was the way that that kind of sticks straight up off of the, the fan set here. Now in this 4000D Corsair case, this you, you can't really bend that cable too sharply there, so it protrudes, you know, maybe inch, inch and a quarter, up above that fan kit and in this particular case that's almost too much there's not enough clearance there so i would have preferred had they provided the 600 millimeter cable with a 90 degree connector on here which keeps it much more flush and of course you can connect that on either side and you can go in either direction you know so really cool that it gives you a lot of versatility and it's not that you can't get the right cable I'm just not sure this was the most appropriate cable to include with this uh, maybe somebody will have a better opinion as to why it was done like that and most setups I think most big cases that you have most full tower and a lot of mid tower cases this isn't going to be a problem but I just know on this 4000 D case over here and I'm not actually going to install it in this case, but this was a little bit too close to comfort. I don't think it's a, I don't think this is the perfect cable to include with this. So my second concern with this is with the 4000 D case over here, I can't put a 360 millimeter radiator in the top. So I thought, well, I'll put it in the front and then put these on the top, but they won't all fit. I was going to have to do just two on the top and then I was going to do one in the rear, but it immediately brought up the next problem here is they only include one cable with this. They don't include a patch cable. And so, you know, I was thinking back to the Lee and Lee fans and the Thermaltake SWA Fan EX uh, fan kit, which are significantly cheaper. Uh, they come with three cables for each one. You could break all three fans apart and connect each one separately. You normally wouldn't do that because you're defeating the whole purpose of it. But I think there would be some use cases where you may want to split those two up, but that puts you in the situation where you then have to maybe go buy a $20 cable in order to do that. And it's already expensive. So that's, that's one scenario where I thought, it just seems like this one cable maybe isn't the most appropriate one. The length is fine, but I wish they would do the 90 degree connection, at least on the one end. And I do also wish that they would include one one would be nice i think one would fit most scenarios but maybe even a second cable at a minimum included with this you know these cables must be expensive or you know something i don't know what they cost to manufacture but they're a little stingy on the cables and so anyways that's my first uh, you know, observation of something that's maybe not so perfect about this. Again, it just really boils down to cost. But when you're installing this, you'll want to just kind of have some forethought as to what cables you're going to need. You know, where are you going to put them? If you have to break this up at all, you're going to need uh, an additional patch cable. So now connecting the fans together is very easy to do. In fact, when you get it in the kit out of the box, they're already uh, connected. But how these go together is you have two little connector pieces. 
Now, one of these is just kind of a dummy lug here. There's no electrical connections on this, and it's just to give it some stability when you connect it. The other little connector piece does have electrical connections. They're in there pretty tight. You gotta kind of work to get them out. Each fan just has one of each connector on each side so that you can daisy chain it together. You just plug that in, and you get the dummy lug on here, the stabilizing lug, whatever you want to call it. And then they just connect together. And it's very easy to do. Now there is also magnets in the sides of the fan here that kind of help it go together. But these lugs fit pretty tight. So you almost don't even need that. But what that equates to is a fairly solid system for keeping these all together. They, you know, they're not coming apart or anything like that. So basically you're gonna start at your controller here. You're gonna plug the cable in, the 600 millimeter connection cable. It's going to connect on either end of the fans. It'll just kind of depend on how you're gonna orient this in your case as to which end you're gonna plug it in. It won't matter which end you plug it in. And then of course through those little interconnect pieces, you're gonna get your electrical signal through there. And then on the very other end, is going to be where you're gonna connect your next cable. So let's move over to the AIO here. Now out of the box, the fans are all pre-installed, which is a very cool touch. And unless you need to move stuff around for some reason, you know, you're doing push, pull, things like that, you don't need to mess with it too much. Now the AIO comes with two connection cables. It comes with a 600 millimeter cable, uh, same as the fan kit. But one difference is, is this has a 90 millimeter uh, connector on it. The AIO has a little controller on here and it's got three different ports on here. It's got two of the IQ link ports and it's also got a little USB-C connector on here. Now just a quick side note, this USB-C connector in the documentation is not described at all as to what it does. Now I did ask Corsair, one of their pre-sales uh, folks, uh, what this port was for and I got a very direct answer is that they didn't know. The information was still forthcoming on that particular port. What I suspect it's for, and somebody maybe knows in the comments below, of course it won't take very long, we'll figure it out, but what I think this is for is the LCD upgrade uh, for the pump head uh, for the AIO. Because somebody had mentioned that, uh, I think well, it was Corsair in one of the videos or information packs I saw, was that the LCD kit, even though this is kind of a single cable connection, the LCD panel was gonna require its own USB connector. The only thing I can think of that this would be for would be for that LCD panel or you know maybe some of the other water cooling components, things like that. Another unusual thing about this is the 90 degree cables, depending on how you plug it in, may cover that up. So you may have to switch it around or use the standard edge, it doesn't really matter. You could plug that in and keep it free. Yeah, but then that cable's kind of sticking out and sticking up. So it's kind of an unusual way to do it. But let's go ahead and make our connection now. And we'll connect it to the first port. Now this kind of interferes with the water hoses a little bit, depending on how you're gonna do it. It's not so tight that it doesn't work, it's fine. It just kind of is kind of a pretty tight fit right there, unless you use the, the standard edge, which is you know, maybe how you would want to do it. And so it doesn't really matter. So for now, we'll put the 90 degree uh, cable on this fan here. And then we're going to go ahead and connect this into the first port. So we're just daisy chaining to the next one. Very easy. Now the other cable that this includes is a 200 millimeter cable and it's got the 90 degree connectors on both sides so you don't get a choice with this one. So you kind of got to fit it in here as best you can and kind of make it work. But you're going to connect it into that second port and then this is going to connect back around to the fan kit. So basically from your controller into this first bank through all the interconnects through this cable into the controller, you know, and then from this cable to run this second, uh, uh, to run this second bank of fans here. Now the pump gets its connection from this controller. Now the other little oddball thing about this, not odd, it's just an observation. The power and signal cable runs down the water hoses here. And you can see these on the pump head here. You can see them kind of uh, extruding out of here. Uh, the only complaint I maybe have about it, and again, it's just minor, it's not a deal killer, is the sleeving 
on the water hoses here is not really tight because you can kind of see this power signal cable running down on both hoses here and it kind of makes it a little bit lumpy and again I'm kind of nitpicking it but it's, it's just not perfect on a lot of AIOs when you get them you know unless you're using one of those jackets that we looked at a while ago which kind of looked dumb you know in some cases this starts to mimic that look a little bit it's, it's it doesn't look perfect is what I'm getting at so, so once you get that all connected, the other cables that you need is the power cable, which is not very long, maybe 300 millimeters. And just connect that in there, and then your PCI cable will need to reach out to it. I think that's probably why it's so short, is you, know, you should have some length on that PCIe cable from your power supply. Uh, your USB cable, uh, it's again micro USB. Plug it in there, and then it, you have a 9-pin header uh, to go onto your motherboard and that's how iq is going to communicate with this controller the other cable is the tachometer cable plug that in there it's just a little two pin connector and it's just a single wire because its only intention is to feed the tachometer rpm of the pump back to your motherboard header so that is the basic connection setup from here and again this is one two three four five six seven devices so we have one connection should control all seven devices. If you have additional fans, you will need to use the other port and make another connection run. And then if you're beyond 14 devices, you're going to need to start using another controller and stick that in there and just keep making those cable connections. For the most part, it's worked okay. There's been a maybe two occasions where fans have misbehaved. Uh, the, first, the first problem I had with this I was trying to set the color on the pump head and it started setting the middle fan over here on the AIO. It, there was no rhyme or reason as to why it was doing that. Um, but I powered it off, reset it, powered it back up and it was fine. It started working normally again. And then a little bit while later, maybe an hour later after messing with this, uh, two of the fans just dropped out. One on each bank too. It wasn't like, you know, it was two right next to each other. I think it was like the first one in each uh, set of three fans just I, I was I was setting the time warp function on it and it just dropped out on me so I never could figure out why it was I reset it rebooted I finally had to unplug it and plug it back in to get it to go you know but after doing that it's been fine the last couple times I've been messing with it I haven't had any issues with it alright so I've got the IQ link system installed and overall Corsair has nailed the simplicity of this uh, again, to recap, it's just a single hub controller, and on each port you can get up to seven devices. So on this particular setup, I've got the hub controller in the back here, a cable running down through the bottom, which is connected to the front three fans. And then at the top here, I've got another uh, link cable that patches in the top three AI, the top three AIO fans. And at the end of that, I've got another single cable that connects to the AIO controller which controls the pump and the RGB lighting for the pump. In the front here, I talked about it earlier in the video that the included cable with the QX123 fan kit is just this straight on connector. It doesn't include a 90 degree connector. Now, as kind of expected with this case and even the 4000D, I don't think I would have been able to do it with that one, but it just takes a lot of space here to get this cable and then I've kind of had to bend this cable really to the maximum amount that I care to bend it because there's a little piece on the front bezel that just rubs right up against here. Uh, coming through the top really isn't a solution because there's, you know, with that bend and how much space that's going to take up, there's really no way to do it. Plus with this setup, it doesn't make any sense to start here because then you'd have to patch it down here. So that doesn't work. And so I've had to start here and barely been able to get this to fit. And then what I ended up doing was I ended up using one of the 90 degree angled cables that came with the AIO and then patched in these top three and then used the very short cable at the end. Do kind of really wish, number one, is, is that with the three fan kit that the included connector was a 90 degree angle that would have made this so much easier here. And, you know, again, at the top, I wish there were shorter cables included as well. So my suggestion to Corsair, this is with me not knowing anything about the business and what the finances and what the cost structures of these cables are, is A, I wish they would have included a 90 degree one, and B, I wish they would have included at least a second cable, uh, 
of smaller size, either the 100 millimeter or the 200 millimeter. And maybe the same for the AIO, just include one extra cable. So that could be a real frustration is if you just go with the stock kits and then it, you might not know until you sit down to install this that you really would benefit or that you need one of those other cables. So you gotta go back, you gotta order those, you know, and wait for those to arrive. This might be a situation where maybe you order a couple of extra cables just to begin with in case you think you might need them. So this is kind of a double-edged sword. I'm sitting here complaining about this particular setup, but the fact is, is that you do have the ability to customize a cable. You can buy shorter versions of it, whereas, you know, with the old style cabling setups, you couldn't do that. You just, you know, you had a big lengthy cable that you had to tuck in somewhere. I just wish maybe they were included is really what I'm getting at, but that's kind of in a perfect world, right? Uh, an important note while you're installing the system, uh, these are not hot swappable, so you should have the system powered off anytime you're installing this, or if you're making changes, adding fans, removing fans, uh, you know, troubleshooting, things like that, uh, have it turned off. So once you get everything installed, uh, basically power up your PC. You're gonna wanna make sure you have the latest and greatest version of IQ installed. Um, I did initially have a version four uh, set of software on here and it would not detect the IQ link uh, devices. So make sure you get uh, just the latest and greatest from IQ, which is currently five point something. Uh, just make sure you have that and you'll be good to go. Uh, once you open IQ, uh, you just go ahead and click over here to the home screen and then you should see the link system hub. And once you have that, just click here and then you can run the wizard initially. I've been messing around with this, so mine might look a little bit different than yours, but you can run the wizard, which will show you the two ports here. You can go next and it's going to tell you what it detected. Uh, QX RGB fans and the link H150i RGB uh, AIO. So we can click next and then it just gives you, this is kind of your layout. Now you can modify the order of them here, or you can just click finish. And then once you're done here, we'll come back over to the lighting setup here in just a second. Uh, you also do get a device settings button on the hub, which is where you can check and update the firmware and you can adjust the brightness up and down for the whole hub. Uh, now lighting setup, we'll wanna pay attention to this. Now, if you've used IQ in the past, this is gonna be uh, just the same as what you've done before but you just wanna order your fan so that it matches kind of what your case is. Now, it doesn't really matter where you start, but like me, I usually like to start at the front bottom, uh, which is gonna be the white fan, so that's in order. Next is red, then there's blue. Moving up to the top, we have yellow, and then we have a purple, and then we have green. So that is in order, but if these were out of order, you can move them around. Some of the animations as they go up and down through the sequence, they will follow this order, so you need to move it around. Uh, the next thing is you'll see that the model here has an LED lit, and you'll notice that on your fan, there's a lit LED as well, and you wanna just make the model match uh, whatever uh, your fan has lit. So this bottom front fan, uh, the white LED is to the top left, so it matches the model. Same with the red, same with the blue, and moving across the top, uh, the yellow is in the, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of the front left. So you kind of have to play around with it, but basically the fan, the, the LED on the fan won't change. You need to change the model in IQ to match the physical fan. And I recommend you spend a few minutes doing that. Uh, it still looks okay. Even if you don't, but, uh, it will look better if you do this right for some animations. The only other thing is you do get a device view here which kind of gives you a visual representation of what devices are here. Now, as of yet with the devices I have, I haven't noticed that this has any effect on anything at all. I can move these around kind of wherever I want them and you know, it doesn't really matter what order it is. It doesn't change it over here you know, in the lighting setup. So I think this is really right now. Now there might be some devices where this actually matters. Let, let me know in the comments below if you find anything here that's uh, contrary to that. This appears to me to just be a visual representation for you to see what devices you have on each chain. So, but that's all you really do with the Link System Hub badge here in IQ. From here, you can just go to each individual device and control it just like you normally would. Uh, so click on the QX120 badge. Of course, you get the lighting playback 
and that's going to be the same as it's always been. You can start creating lighting layers here. We'll delete that and then you can add a new one. You can do watercolor, but you can set whatever lighting function you want. There's many of them available. And these being a quad loop fan, there are, uh, you know, some of the more unique ones that you get. Uh, things like gate, you know, the ping and the pong. Uh, those all look really good and you can have a lot of fun with that. Uh, maybe I'll do a separate video and, you know, get some good uh, video of all of these in here. So, and of course you can layer these and then moving down, you get a bunch of customizations. IQ has the ability to do quite a bit of customized RGB lighting, including, you know, you can start selecting individual LEDs and things like that. You can do really kind of uh, whatever you want. Lighting link, of course, same as it's always been. This is where you're going to control all devices at once. You get your quick lighting zones, which means all your fans. And then, you know, for each individual effect, you may have, you know, some different color selections, speed, direction, things like that. We're not going to go through each of those. Uh, the new one here is Time Warp. So we want to talk about this. Now, Time Warp really uh, applies only like up to 2000 RPMs. I think it says over 2000 RPMs. It will just disable the effect. It's not able to uh, strobe the light that fast, apparently. But uh, when you come to Time Warp, you have to turn off and on each individual fan. So you can turn them all on, some of them on, whatever. And once you turn it on, then we can select whichever one we want. Uh, one thing I don't like is, you know, Corsair IQ doesn't really necessarily label these in order. So I've had to mess around with it a couple of times to see which fan is which. Uh, but once you're here, you can see that, uh, you know, the effect that shows like the fan stopped. It's really a cool effect. But from here, you can change the color, you know, to whatever you want. And you can change the opacity of that. And then you can select which time warp function you want. Uh, you have static clockwise and counterclockwise, which just makes it look like it's kind of moving slowly. And of course you can change the speed of that. You're not actually changing the speed of the fan, just changing the speed of the effect. It'll just give the appearance that it's moving uh, slower or faster. Now this effect will change a little bit based on the RPM of the fan. And it's not perfect. Yeah, you'll sense some flicker in there. I would, I would expect a few people won't really love this you may detect that flicker a little bit more than others, uh, but it does look really cool. It's fun to play around with. And so that is about it for that. Uh, now you do get the hardware lighting, of course. Now hardware lighting is just something that's stored in the controller that takes effect if IQ is not running. It's like when your PC is booting up or if IQ is you know, having a fault or something like that, you know, or so, you know, when you're powering down, once IQ is dead, uh, this will be what the controller will apply to it. Now you can do a hardware time warp uh, function as well. Now here you do get the option to select all of them at once. And that will apply again if IQ is not running, the controller will apply that. Uh, the cooling function here, this is the same as it's always been. Of course, here you can label each individual fan. So if you right click or you, if you click the three dots out here, you can rename the sensor. And here you can name it something more descriptive as to which fan is which. And then of course you can apply the preset uh, fan curves to it. You get quiet, balanced, extreme, or you know as you always could, you can create your custom curves. Uh, you know with an actual custom curve, fixed RPM, fixed percentage, things like that. Now these QX120 fans go up to 2,400 RPMs. Uh, they're fairly noisy at that, but they do work. They they will move some air. So. Uh, but anyways, that's the same as it's always been. You can create these. Of course, IQ, you know, you have the capability to create all of the different profiles and whatever you want. Now, here's where you get access to all of your different temperature sensors. These are all on the individual fans and you can rename those. And, you know, obviously you can set all of your fan curves to whichever fan. Each fan could have its own custom curve to its own temperature if you so desire. That's all fairly typical of IQ. Now over on the pump side, uh, again, it's fairly typical. You just get the model here of the pump itself and you can create uh, whatever lighting layer and you can set whatever lighting effect you want. Um, of course, this does not have uh, the time warp. Uh, hardware lighting is just the same thing, just if IQ is not running. Obviously cooling is exactly what it is. You can set your pump speed 
uh, or your pump curve, I should say, uh, balanced extreme, variable speed, and you get a couple of different options there. And of course you get the uh, coolant temp sensor here as well and all of the logging and graphing functions. And of course you get the uh, alerts here as well. So you can set uh, different actions based on the coolant temp if you want. So to give you some final thoughts on my initial look at the IQ Link system, uh, overall I think Corsair nailed what they set out to do. Um, you know, it is simplistic to install. Um, it's got a couple caveats with the cable sizes and things like that. But even though that can present you know, a, a difficulty here and there, the very fact that we get those cable sizes shouldn't be underestimated. So it's almost like a good problem to have in a way. And you, know, you just got to have some forethought so you don't frustrate yourself during the installation by either A, not having the cables. You know, B, you may, just, you may not have even known that you needed a specific cable. And it kind of sucks to have to go back to the website, order a cable and wait a couple of days or more for the cable to get here. That's just something to consider before you start building with this. The only other real thing that I've noticed, and I talked about it a little bit earlier, is on this AIO, I'm not a huge fan of how the power and signal cable follows along the water hose. I think it, if you have a knack for perfection and you just want the very best look, it, it doesn't look terrible, but I, think, I, just, I don't really like that. I almost would have preferred that they had just made the AIO pump have its own separate link cable. I would have preferred they did that instead of trying to feed this up the water uh, hose. Uh, I'll put some close-up photos here so you can kind of see what that looks like. It's one of those things that once you see it, you can't unsee it. And it just, I don't know for me personally, you know, since the whole point of this channel is kind of to make it look good, I'm not going to say it totally sucks because I get what they're going for. I, it just, to me, it's just, you know, for as much money and as nice as this product is, I just wish they had found another way to do that than to just tuck it in and sleeve it up. So, so my other thoughts on this, as far as the RGB lighting goes, uh, you get a couple of new things to do with these uh, QX120 fans. Most notably is the time warp that we uh, looked at. And that's a really cool feature, albeit it doesn't do a whole lot. You know, you, you can set it to a static function, clockwise, counterclockwise, change the opacity and, you know, the speeds and things like that. Overall, a very cool effect, though. I really like the way that it looks. Uh, the RGB lighting uh, that you get otherwise is fairly typical of what Corsair is doing. There's some cool stuff there, no doubt. Looks good. Lots of customizations. Uh, <clears throat> you can link it with all the other Corsair stuff. Overall, what do I think of this product? Well, I think it's very cool. I think it's awesome what Corsair has done with trying to create a modular system. Uh, you know, a couple of people have done it before. Lee and Lee, Thermaltake, you know, another... Uh, no name brand fan kit that I looked at was doing that, but it's very cool what they've brought to the table here and hopefully they can expand on this. I know there's some other products coming. There was some mention that they would maybe try to license this system out to other products, which I think would be really cool. Uh, but again, I said it in the last video, I'll believe any of that when I see it. You know, at least for right now, this is uh, exclusive to Corsair. I'd be surprised if anybody else tries to adopt this thing. but. That said, if you can get over the price of it, um, it is really cool if you're building a new PC. Would I run right out and replace my existing Core XTs and Commander Pros for this? You know, if I've already invested a lot of money on it? Probably not. Um, you know, the time warp feature is really cool, but you know, unless you're upgrading or you're building a new PC, I don't see you know, a whole lot of reason to go out and just go to this, wait till your next refresh. Of course, that's up to you. You know, if, if you like this kind of stuff, you know, like me, uh, it's totally fun to play around with and works great. So the only other thing to mention is the fans do have a temperature sensor built into them. As I mentioned in IQ, uh, you really just get another sensor. Whether that's going to be useful to you or not, I don't know. Um, on the individual fans, I don't know how much I would use that, although I do appreciate that it's there. You know, I can see some, you know, it's kind of cool to be able to go look and see what those temperatures are. The other thought I have is the QX120 uh, fan does look really good. You know, the back plate on it's got the nice Corsair logo that's lit up. It's one of the better looking fans, at least from the rear uh, that I've seen. So, um, you know, overall, pretty good. So that is going to do it for today. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about this product. Uh, if there's other videos you want to see, you know, questions that maybe I didn't address in this first look, I'll be happy to follow up with additional videos. But that is going to do it for today. Thanks for watching.